Hello to you, our dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Brother Richard Casanes, and welcome again to this another Saturday watch party and here in Love Life, learning to love the giver of life for us to love life. Today, what I will be sharing to you is about more the most common question, especially for an existentialist, talking about existence. And later on, I'll be sharing points on how can we live out this life and hopefully that this video will give us an encouragement to continue to love this life and so to begin dear brothers and sisters one of the questions that human person will always ask is that about his own existence why did I exist or what's the purpose or meaning of this life but such question we are not so aware of this when we were still young when we were born when we were kids and maybe at a certain point at a crossroad probably high school college years or maybe even up to up to this moment in time you are asking yourself what is the purpose of this life especially the purpose of this god given life knowing for a fact that even the heavens and earth has its own purpose the stars in the night the sun and moon the living and the non-living things the animals the plants they do have their purpose and for sure for us we do have a purpose of this life that's been given to each one of us and maybe the question is that why did God give me this life or among anyone else in and in the topic of our science but among all of those cells, why you among all of those? And so, let me share to you four points on what is the purpose of this God-given life. The first one, God gave us his life because he loves us. He loves us very much. And for sure, you know that for a very fact. But a lot of times in our lives, we often forget this, especially when the challenging times will come into our life. I remember talking to a brother in this week, in the past few days, was that been asking about, is the Lord still love me? Is the Lord still around? Is he still here? Why is it that he's not hearing my prayers? Even though I do ros rosary together with my family. But my dear brothers and sisters, the main fact will always remain that God loves us as it reads in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. That God is love and those who live in love live in union with God and God lives in union with them. The first point there, brothers and sisters, God is love. We may always say that we are a loving person. We can self-proclaim that. Unless people will tell us that we are a loving person, then that will really affirm that we are such a loving person. And I believe it's the same way that God is love. He doesn't need anything. But He, he chose to make, to create all of us, to have us here on earth, for Him to show that magnanimous, that amazing love, that faithful love that He has prepared for each one of us. And God wants to show that love to you, to me, to all of us who are alive, those who are here, who have been given this life, for Him to show His love. And He wants to show His love to others through each of us. The second point is that He wants, the purpose of this life is that He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. When we say, intimate is marked by a warm friendship, an association that has been molded over a course of time. It's not just something about, you can say an anti intimate if it's just only a day or two, but it is something being there for over a longer period of time. And we say relationship, it's more on a collaboration of two or more people. And in a Christian context, when we say he wants to have an intimate relationship is that it's more on about being a Christian, having the pers growing personal relationship with Christ. Growing, it's active, okay? It's growing, so it's not sedentary. So it's always being molded 
time to time, day by day. It's not just once you have accepted Christ, you know that God loves us, God loves you, then that's all. But it's not just about that. And in this way, this is that having that personal, it's not just um, something that you can just, call, that will just pass by, but it is something very intimate between you and the Lord himself and he wants us to make us feel and in the same passage in first john 4 16 that all those who live in love live in union with god and god lives in union with them and he wants that brothers and sisters and to form that in james 4 7 10 it says that submit yourselves to god come near to god and he will come near to you come to god and he will come near to you in the same story, talking to this brother, been asking is that, you know what, bro? I still feel the, the presence of the Lord because even if it seems that I'm the one running away from Him, but He keeps uh, doing His way to make Himself feel that He still exists in my life. And such an, an affirmation for each one of us, my dear brothers and sisters, because God made you because He wants to have an intimate relationship with you as God wants us to be closer to him as much as he wants to be closer to us to have that intimate relationship with God is that he wants us to be closer also with his own people with his people to have fellowship with others it says in Hebrews 13 16 that do not forget to do good and to help one another because these are the sacrifices that God that pleases God or that please God do not forget to do good and to help one another probably we can imagine living a life alone here on earth it's gonna be quite boring unless you choose to be here in the place where I am at Kaamulan grounds here in Bukidnon in Balay Balay it's quiet you can hear, hear the flowing of the water and even the cicadas, the birds chirping. But we are, as Christians, as believers, is that we are not meant to live this life alone. We are not lone rangers here. We may need a time to be alone, but not forever, because we are meant to be with others. For us, remember that God shows his love, and for him to have that love be manifested to others through each of us through us and we have fellowship brothers and sisters with others for us to do good and to help there to support them to share with them not necessarily to share with them in their joy but also to share with them in their sorrows in their pain and um, being just merely to have our presence there even if we don't have something to give but the prayers and presence that we can give to each other is very meaningful more meaningful above the, any material thing that we can give to anyone. My dear brothers and sisters, probably you've been working for sure hidden deep inside is that we are not working to earn for ourselves, but we work for us to earn to serve others, most especially our families, those who are in our circle, those who are friends, to be with others, to help those in need. And even those who have been sacrificing are meant uh, not even for themselves, imagining ourselves to be in the frontliners and those who are in frontliners watching this video is that yes, we really honor them for their sacrifices and for us to support them is to be there, to pray for them. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, we God called us to have this purpose of this life is for us to have fellowship with others. And lastly is that Aside to have fellowship with others is that we then are called to evangelize. We are being commissioned by Jesus. It's not about the mission of omission, but it's a mission of commission. Being sent out for us to evangelize, allowing others to feel what we feel, the joy for them to receive the joy, the peace, the love, the assurance, the hope the faith that God have given to us. And so that's our purpose, my dear brothers and sisters. As, the, as 
Jesus commissioned the apostles, we are also being commissioned to do the same. As it says in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, Go then to all peoples everywhere, make them my disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will be, I will be with you always. Go then to make disciples, make them my disciples, not, <laughs> not me, not even your leaders, not even the Pope, but we are disciples of Christ himself. That's our purpose, one of the purpose, brothers and sisters. We are being sent out, we are being commissioned to bring others. How joyful it would be imagining that we are not meant uh, to be alone, but also for us to be with others celebrating, uniting with them, and proclaiming God's good. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, those are the four. One of them, the purpose of this God-given life, for God to show His love, for Him to have that intimate relationship with Him, and for us to have fellowship with others, and for us to evangelize. And that is life. How am I going to live out this life? And you probably, you've heard many suggestions, but let me share to you that life is going to be like a cup. May I suggest that you check what you have there. For sure you have gifts, you have talents, you have skills, you might be good in piano, playing the guitar, good in cooking, good in writing, good in speaking, good in teaching, and whatsoever. You do have gifts that you needed to discover if you haven't yet. So you need to discover those hidden talents, skills, and gifts given to you. We weren't born without nothing, but we were born with these gifts given to each one of us. So check it out. And then go. If you know someone there who needs your presence, who needs your prayers, who needs your support, who needs to share with you um, their pain, go and uplift others. By doing so, we are uplifting others. You know that life's battles, uh, life's battles are best fought with others. Not necessarily that we are the ones fighting the battle of our friend, but we are assuring them that we are there, backing them up to support them, to be there with them, and to assure them that as we, as they have ours. They, uh, we also have theirs to support them, to uplift them. And then place everything what you've got. Give it away. In the conversion, uh, during the first conversion, um, a lot of people have given away their riches, their treasures, their earthly treasures to be part of the mission. I don't believe that no one here on earth can't give anything. Imagine that woman who only had two silver coins was still able to give it out. No one is so poor for them not to be able to give out something. And no one is re so rich, you know this. No one is so rich for them not to need anything. My dear brothers and sisters, life is like an empty cup. We came out of this world with nothing empty. It's empty. But along the way in our journey, our cup is being filled. And as the cup is being filled, it overflows. It needs to be poured out to something based on what we have gained in life. And we need to be really be grateful and be mindful that we only have one cup. This cup of life, my dear brothers and sisters. That is why it's so very, it is very important for us to be mindful of the things that we pour into our cup. Because if we pour in, fill in good things or bad things, we fill in with bad things, definitely we pour bad things also. If we want to leave a mark in those people that surround us, brothers and sisters, is that let's learn to live this life, this cup of life, by filling it with the love of God with the love of Christ, that we may be filled with love, we may be able to pour out and share such love to 
others. To end, my dear brothers and sisters, it seems so easy. Yes, bro, those principles have been hearing that so many times. I've been known Jesus for all this time. Yeah, I don't have to argue with that. But what I'm trying to say here is that we need to be reminded all the time. I need to be reminded. I need to be reminded by the people that surrounds me for in order for me to give this out. Because if I won't be reminded, each of us won't be reminded about this, it's so easy for us to fall, to go back again to our old ways. Knowing, following, and doing all these brothers and sisters will never be easy. Nothing comes easy in this life. Even Jesus himself did not find it um, easy living out here on earth, doing his mission. This thing called faith that we do have, this hope, will never be easy. And that's for sure. We will always be challenged. But we needed to guard ourselves always. Because the Satan, the devil, is always all there waiting for his opening whenever in our most vulnerable times to lurk into, to bring us, to pull us back into our old ways. But but what made Jesus what made Jesus um, what made him through all of this is that his relationship with God being assured of God's love to always go back to him always going up to the mountain to renew the relationship that intimate relationship within between Jesus and the Father and the same thing for all of us my dear brothers and sisters Keep this in mind. You, you are love. And love this life given to you because God loves you as a recipient of this life. The question is, will you love Him back? Will you choose to have that intimate relationship with Him? Will you choose to have fellowship with others? Will you choose to evangelize? Let me pray for you, my dear brothers and sisters. You can also pray wherever you are right now. We're praying. Let us pray. In the name of Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience this life, allowing us to have this life amidst all the uncertainties of life, all the challenges that we've encountered, and even for the challenges, ch challenges that we are still going to encounter, we ask you to strengthen each of us, strengthen our faith, O oh Lord. Allow us to grow more in your love, in that, or that intimate relationship with you, to have fellowship with others, to evangelize. And Father, always remind us that we are merely cup. We are just a mere cup. Nothing without you, O oh Lord. And so, we continue to entrust to you all our concerns. In Jesus' name, our Lord and King. Amen. Thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters. Before we end, um, if you do have your prayer petitions, uh, you feel free to or don't hesitate to have comment below. And for us, the brothers and sisters in Lingkod Malay Balay, to pray for you. And the above mentioned four, we will be discussing or we will be sharing or we will be talking about it more in detail as we uh, in our upcoming watch parties only here in Love Life so that together we'll be able to learn the giver to learn to love the giver of life for us to love life. May the Lord be adored and glorified always. God bless you all.